Okay, moving on to day two then. This is going to be a day full of headlines, I feel. This is there's potentially a race of the week later on in the day. And we kick things off with maybe one of the more storied headlines already leading in. Um, I think it it's will something be. that we have been very protective about what we talk about on this podcast, and we will continue to be so, even if she hits the nomination standard, because it just kind of feels wrong putting pressure on a 14, 15 year old swimmer. So mm. Amelie Bloxage is the reigning British champion in the 1500 meters freestyle. She has made massive drops throughout the course of this year, and she may be the best British chance to hit the nomination standard of 1601.95. But simply put it, I don't care if she doesn't get it. She is a brilliant talent in this sport, in this country, and she's going to have so many more opportunities to mm. get to the Olympics. This, she needs no pressure at this meet put on her to make that time, in my opinion. She might feel pressure in her own mind because she's going into the competition as... The, the the champion i do believe that she has a good time of actually hitting that nomination time as well but again mm. i'm in the same boat as you where if she hits it then that, amazing fantastic if she doesn't hit it still amazing fantastic she's yep, 15 yep. you know the next olympic games she'll be 19 well that's, that's like perfect that's right. perfect you know let's not let's not rush her you know we don't want to mm. put any pressure on her, which is why we don't talk about her as much as we do in this podcast Maybe we should do. I mean, I, I think most people probably would, to be honest with you. But we're very much, we're very much, we want her to keep enjoying the sport because she might end up being, you know, a very, well, she already is a very, very good British summer. Maybe one of the best we ever produce. Who knows? But it's, um, it's something that I think we should keep our expectations back a little bit just because of the age of Amelie. And when I say R, I hope it's media people who are listening to this. People who have platforms like we do. And mm. don't like swim swam write articles left, right, and center about her. Um, yeah. I hope it's people who aren't looking for clickbait, who mm. aren't looking for reads, who aren't looking for views. There is a perfectly good reason why we haven't gone deep diving into Amelie's performances over the past few years, how she's improved, because we've taken guidance from people a lot more educated in swimming than we are. Uh, yes. Coaches at big universities, coaches who are leading British swimming programs. Yeah. Uh, and essentially their advice was let her enjoy it. So people, that's, let her enjoy it. That's all that matters, to be fair. But outside of Amelie, you've got Fleur Lewis, who we've had on a podcast very recently after hitting British records. British records? The one British record in the 800, yeah. I believe can it was. I, can I talk about her build-up? Go on, do it. Really interestingly, I was at Bucks and spoke to her coach, Andy Manley, and they've opted for educated risk is the word I believe he used. Okay. She's coming off the back of altitude into this meet, which not many swimmers would do. Like her taper is going to be at, well, taper for a 1500 swimmer. It's, it's not really a taper. Yeah. She actually likes to keep the meterage really high from when we spoke to her. So there might not be a taper. Um, mm. The reason she's coming off the back of altitude, which no other swimmer other than Toby Robinson, who's already qualified for the Olympics, mm. is going to be doing... It's because the last time she set a British record, like you said, Dan, was straight off the back of altitude. Yeah. Um, they see it as the best chance she's got for making a big personal best leap. Um, can she get down to 160.195? Yeah, it's it's a big leap. Um, but she has been dropping time left, right and centre all year. She I, has. In my head, I want her to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd love to see that the literary class is a risk. I don't know if it's an educated risk, like you say. Hopefully, Hopefully it anything does. anything Andy Manley wants to do, I trust him. Uh, oh God, I absolutely agree. The <laughs> fact that he can get Dan Whiffin doing what he can, then yeah, yeah trust the man, do what he says, um, and hopefully that works out for her. Mm. And maybe it will. But to then, what's the time? So she's entered sixteen twenty five. So she's got to find another twenty odd seconds or so. I think which she's is, been faster than that time. Which though. is, I feel like she has as well, to be honest with you. But let's just let's just say she's got to find twenty seconds on a fifteen hundred, which is doable, I suppose. But it's very very tough. Um, but hopefully this um, opens up some doors for her, to be honest with you. The fact that if if this works for her, she knows going into hopefully Paris, who knows, or future meets, mm -hmm. altitude is the way to go and then come back be and then race. That might open a few possibilities for other swimmers as well to do that. It's an expensive way of tapering. <laughs> it is. Yes, it is. I want to talk a little bit about Lucy Hanquit racing at this one. It's, yeah. For me, it's a very weird one. She's a guest swimmer. 
She's mm. not a British swimmer competing for a nomination standard. This is, it's a rarity at these, this meet. There are a few littered about. And it is tends to be swimmers. You have to be racing at, or you have to be training at a British program. Mm. When you're the third fastest swimmer, though, I don't really like it because you're you're taking an opportunity away from a British swimmer of saying I finaled at an Olympic trials. Which That's true. I know this isn't packaged as an Olympic trials. For example. Ninth seed going in is Ava Cook from Sheffield. She could say on her resume going forward, I final because it's heats declared winner, so the fastest is, from, yeah. the yeah. fastest eight will race that final. Yeah. Uh she's not getting that opportunity because of a foreign swimmer, which it doesn't sit great with me. I can see what you're saying. And I think I think I do agree. And I, the f- mm. Maybe this is why it's not called an Olympic trials. This is why it's called Olympic champs. Because if this wasn't an Olympic selection event and it was just a standard mm. Olympic champs, if it was just a standard British champs every year, this happens. Like you get your guest swimmers come in. I know a few Brits go out to other countries as well when they're training there and racing there. Yeah. It just, because it is the event it is, it takes away something for me. And I kind of... In my eyes, the perfect scenario is she doesn't race in the fastest heat. She races in the heat before. Yeah, and then she's, let's say, a minute faster. Yeah, she's miles faster. Just... She's miles faster. But you're taking... Like, Ava Cook could be racing on BBC Sport in that evening session yeah. with all of the grandeur that's going with it. How great an opportunity is that? That's the big negative, I think. It's, and that is a just... very big negative for someone who's... Let's just go with Ava Cook. Because she's 16. Sorry for picking you out, Ava. If you and, yeah, I know. <laughs> We've just gone for the youngest one who's around that sort of 8th, ninth area. Um, that is a big negative and it could be maybe the highlight of her career. Who knows, yeah, you know? I, mm. And hopefully it's not and hopefully she continues swimming and we see a future British champs yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, in the future. I kind of just but wanted then, to stick up from for a, her a little bit. Let's say from a spectator point of view, you want to see the best of the best, I suppose. So that's the <laughs> other side of the coin. But yeah, I see okay. what you're saying. I okay. do see what you're saying. But in... The scenario that Kyle Chalmers is over here on a training camp and he wants to race <laughs> yeah. British champs in 100 free. In this situation, he would be allowed to and it would take away from a top eight final. It would. And actually, it's I have just... a bit more, weirdly, I have a bit more of a problem with that just because it's, 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 it's the same thing. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. I do. I see what you're saying and I am a little, yeah, worried about it. But let's not go too negative. We let's, won't go. let's move on. It's a great way to start day two, though. I'm really looking forward to the battle of Amelie and Fleur. Like, I've been looking forward to that for actually quite a long time. Well, we better carry on with our predictions. Do you think Amelie will do it? Yes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. As do in it? win. Win gold, sorry. Uh, she will win gold. Yes, the nomination standards. I have no opinion. Yeah, difficult. No I opinion think, I... I'm recording on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's got a good chance. Let's just say it like that. Yeah. Uh, next up then, the women's mixed classification 50 meters breaststroke, with, of which there's only one swimmer, which is quite yeah, hard to is... see. I don't like these where it's just a single swimmer, but I've been too negative on the previous event. So we will be good on this one. Uh, there's no nomination standard for Iona Winifrith to hit in this mm. one because this is a relay event, like we said before. Yeah. Um, I couldn't tell you, honest, to be brutally honest, the consideration time she's got to hit. We actually spoke to a few para-athletes before we did this podcast to make sure that they knew and they didn't, uh, yeah. which isn't overly helpful. Um, I hope London gets very, very loud for her racing by herself. Yeah, well, it will do. I'm pretty sure that will happen. But she's I don't only like, 13. I don't like the idea that she actually has to swim by herself. Like, yeah, surely can someone else sort of swim with her? Yeah, it's a Even massive if it shame. Was mixing with the guys, I just. Well, yes, yeah, maybe, maybe it's something that Iona will really look forward to. Being thirteen, sure. London Aquatic Centre, you've got the whole pool to yourself. Everyone's cheering you on. Uh, maybe that will spur her on to do something incredible. But again, yeah. we don't know what time she's got to hit because we don't know, and some of the actual para swimmers that we speak to don't, don't know, know themselves. <laughs> so it's a bit difficult. It's a bit. She's confusing. had some really good experiences recently because she w- went and raced over in Lignano in Italy mm, as part yes. of the World Para Series. Which imagine doing that at thirteen. What oh, a great incredible. experience that is. Yeah. Um, that was my first ever training camp for, as a swimmer to Lignano. By the way, Dan. 
Oh, that's nice to know. Thanks. I know. I got knocked out on that beach playing beach <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, I wasn't story. swimming. Yeah. I wasn't swimming. Yeah. <laughs> Silly things. Silly things. Okay, Dan, moving on to the men's 200 meters butterfly. This is an event with an incredibly stiff nomination standard thanks to the great Christoph Milak. Obviously, yeah. it's based, I believe, off his time, if not. Uh, world final, Olympic final, that sort of time. It's mm. fast. It's fast. It's a one fifty four nine seven, which means swimmers who want to hit this time are going to have to hit some massive personal best. You're yeah. talking three, four, five seconds in an incredibly tough event. Um, I would love to see some of them going for it from the gun and <laughs> hanging on. Yeah, uh, painful way to do it. But the main contenders are going to be Thomas Beely, Josh Gammon, Ruben Roboth, and Keating, who's moved to Loughborough. Can any of them get there, Dan? Oh, it's tough. That's, that's a very, very big ask. A very big ask. When you've got Thomas Beely, who's going in on entry time here, so 57 flat, and he's got to find two seconds on a 200 fly. That's tough. And then you've got Josh Gammon, who's got to find three seconds. Yeah, it's, it's a big ask. Big ask. What I'm most looking forward to is the actual event itself. It's going to be the super battle. exciting. Yeah. It's going to be a big battle between... I'd probably say the top two, Beely and Gavin. Those, those are the two that I'm most looking forward to watching. And I do like the idea of watching someone bomb it from the start on the tuna fly. Mm. Um, just because it's survival of the fittest almost. Who can make it to the end before yeah, yeah, yeah. they, you know, really, really die. So like Jimmy used to race this. Yeah, that's the way. That's the perfect way of doing it, really. <laughs> um, from a spectator's point of view, not actually doing it. I imagine that could really hurt. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, but so I'm I, not I, swimming it. I think the, the nomination time is a little bit out of reach, but really it's it's about winning. And I think it's about becoming British champion in this event. That should be the aim for these guys. Yeah, I'm with you. I think the nomination standard realistically is out of reach. Like that's really it's a really really fast time. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's one of Very the tough. hardest ones out of the whole of the British swimming yeah, Olympic I agree. selection yeah. standard. Um, but that, like you said, that doesn't mean the battle for gold is not one circled um yep. ruben Ru roboth and keating is improving all over the place i still don't quite know what his best event is um and maybe that's a good thing actually when you've got someone yeah, that young point. who yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. specializing just yet and keeping all doors open to go two minutes flat for a tuna fly at his age is actually quite good going right mm. now yeah. and actually would love to see 19. him go sub two which i think he's capable of doing yeah i think that's that's more than in his um capabilities but yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting race just to watch. I think. Yeah, I, I actually wrote in my preview notes here, um, these guys will be very happy that this is day two and comes very quickly on their <laughs> schedule because Ruben is going to have events elsewhere, so he's not going to be fatigued from those. And Josh mm. is going to... I know Josh is certainly targeting the 100. So mm. to get the two fly out the way when you're not already cooked from a long meet is probably a happy place to be true yeah yeah very true <laughs> moving on then to the women's 200 meters breaststroke um going into the tokyo olympics this was an event of huge strength for mm, british swimming I molly agree. renshaw abby wood i think they both finaled mm. in tokyo um but molly's retired abby's concentrating on imm freestyle and the nomination standard of 22304 a British swimmer hasn't got close to that in a while. Yeah, about three years or so, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. roughly speaking. Um, yeah. I like suppose... the event before, it doesn't diminish the battle for me. No, if if anything, it's actually a, a bigger battle because you've got more names thrown into the hat. So the mm. men's tuna fly was really sort of a two-horse race. If you throw Ruben in there, maybe a three-horse race. But on this one, I think you've got maybe a four, possibly five, Possibly going on six. entry times and Harrod Evans isn't in the top five yeah. right now but I would say Be quite careful. comfortably actually that she is the form breaststroker on the women's side not of the two I, d I don't I really don't think the two's the target now after seeing what she's been doing oh. in the hundred and we'll get to that I think this is blow some cobwebs off and you do what you do Possibly. I don't think she cares what she does in the two breaststroke it wouldn't surprise me if she's on the podium like at all. That wouldn't surprise me. And I'd go the opposite way. It wouldn't surprise me if she pulls out the final. I, I agree. Probably. Yes. <laughs> the, the 100 is obviously the main target yeah. for her. Rightly so, because that's the one where she's near enough hitting a British record and the real opportunities, etc. But this is the 200. So let's not talk about Ang Harrod then, if she's not in the top five as of right now. It's actually Gillian K. Davey, who swims out of Kentucky. Yep. 
who she's came on the champion, scene, I really? suppose, last last year, right? At Champs and ends up winning this event, if I've got that right, if my memory serves me well. Absolutely correct, yeah. So she's going in a faster seed. Cara Hanlon, I suppose she's the one for me that I would say she's favourites. I think she's the one to beat. This is her sort you of You think? Oh, I still think yeah. there's a big swim from Lily Booker on the way. I feel like it's been brewing for a while. So, yes, I've been We, we about predicted her last summer. And we're like, yes. this is it. It's coming. And then it didn't quite come. And I'm, I'm, I'm still on that train. I'm, I feel like there's a swim there. So like, do I. Waiting to be swam. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. The technique just it's tells good. me yeah. that there's something there. Yeah. That there's, there's something that just needs to be, something needs to click. And you interestingly, know? she's got the same coach that Molly and Abby used to have in this event. Like, he knows yeah, what he's that's... doing with 200 breaststrokers, Dave Hemmings. Yeah, yeah. And maybe this is the time where she suddenly comes, comes out good. and then finds a couple of seconds or so, you know? Possibly. I would... A little bit less like the two-fly. The two-fly nomination time and the drops in that looked impo- like improbable. Mm. In this one, it's one of those events, we saw it with Abby heading into Japan, where the drops do actually seem possible. Like, things... Weird happen in the 200 breaststroke in the Olympic year. Drops do come out of I think nowhere. It's, it's all pacing wise, isn't it? If you get yeah. the first 100 split correct and you've got enough energy to do effectively sort of like an equal or negative split, mm. then you're in, you're in good shape. And this is what I think Cara is really good at. Her building okay. into her event is, I'd probably say, the best in the country, I would say. Probably on the 100 as well. Her, come, her back end speed, I think, is the best. Which is why I, I think will... the 200 is sort of suited for her. I'll strongly debate you on that topic when we get to the 100. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> if you remember, I don't know what day it is no, on. I've completely I, forgotten. I will. <laughs> it's the last day, I believe. So who, who have you got then? I've got Kara for this one. Yeah, I'll go Kara. I think Lily Booker second. Yeah. Okay, moving on. This, for me, is one of, if not the race of the week. I, I put it right up there with the two freestyle uh, really men's is. 100 meters backstroke uh we've previewed this in a video where we talked about british backstroke and being in the best place it's been since 2009 mm. we haven't had a 52 point 100 backstroker since chris walker heaven in 2015 yeah um nine years that's nine nuts. years ago <laughs> we, we keep we've said on this podcast and preview episodes before that actually British backstroke is going through a lull mm. I think I'm going to predict this now there's more than one 52 backstroker coming out of this oh and I'll and throw it back I, to you do you do you know who those two will be I we got, don't know who do you predict will be those two is that too strong a prediction that is really well, strong. You've said it now. <laughs> you like a wild prediction. Let's go for it. Let's do it. Um, I think Ollie Morgan and John O'Adam. Oh, and my word. Okay. I'm probably thinking with not my heart, but I've spoken to uh, these guys a lot over mm. the last month or so. So John O'Adam was the guy who came on the podcast last week, yes. our final yeah. episode before these British champs. If you want to check that episode out, I highly recommend you do. He's been throwing it down in training yeah. and there's a route to the 52 so the swim he did last year at len under 23s was a 53 4 5 mm. and in his words he came back in a body bag so he took it out <laughs> way too hard yeah um they've been working on that front end split and i've seen clips and he's been getting that front end split right which I, is- I, I didn't speak to john unfortunately after so i'll speak to him at champs but the way that he was saying that his training sessions that he's been doing and the times that he's been hitting have been relatively close to PB. And this is after whatever he's done in the session as well. Mm. It does bode well for him to go a 52 point. It really does. And Both the fact of... that actually he's already hit the nomination time already. So he's just got to hit a PB. He did it, yeah, he did it last summer. So he's and, just got to and hit. And he's, he's done it. Um, I'm going to agree with one of you. I think one, one of your theories here, I think Oliver Morgan is going to get a 52 point. He is just the, the form summer for me right now. He is He's the class. every time he gets in the pool, it's 53 yeah. low, 53 low. Every time he hasn't tapered, he does taper or he does need a taper. Like you saw at British champs last year. Once he does have a taper, he, he blows the doors off. So I'm kind of expecting a 52 from him. To be honest with you. I think he has the nomination time, which then puts I've him gone on bold the relay, with I think. I feel like saying Ollie is getting a 52 isn't bold. 
No, I, I'm f- quite confident, actually. With so that. I just want to... The British record is a 52-7. Mm. We might just want to keep he, an eye on that. You reckon he'd be close to that? He could, yeah, no, you know what? I don't <laughs> think you're too far off, actually. I think, I think he could. Yeah, and actually, that's it's. We've only spoken about two of them. You have got Cam Brooker. You've got yeah. You, okay, let's, let's go for the rest. You got. Let's go with Johnny Marshall. Actually, who's just broken a Ryan Lochte school record. That that's that two of them. That's good going. Yes, I know it's yards, <laughs> and yes, he's got to do the same transition as Julian K. Davy going from NCAA yards to then suddenly long course meters. So that is a tr- tough transition. But he is someone to look out for. Obviously, being. Swim, or swimming yards, swimming fast swimming yards. fast. He's doing strong underwaters. I know he's mm-hmm. only got one turn on a 100 back, backstroke, but he's looking good right now. And he could be a dark horse to... Is it, Could he win it, potentially? He might hit the nomination time. That would be impressive. Here's the thing. I've just spoken about very, very fast times, which might actually be unrealistic because <laughs> the pressure comes on at these championships. The time that needs, needs to be hit, like we're getting really excited when we're talking about 52s. <laughs> yeah. The time that needs to be hit is a 53.68, of mm. which Ollie Morgan has already swam this year, is yeah. very capable. Jono Adams swam last summer, very capable. Cam Brooker is near or n- like near that and Two capable. Or three. Yeah. Luke Greenbank yeah. has gone that fast in the past he has. and he's getting back to form. Johnny Marshall is breaking Ryan Lochte records and is second seed heading into NCAAs, which means you're fast. Yep. And that's, that without, time, and that's without saying Matt Ward, Brody Williams, Scott Gibson, all of these guys. I mean, that's, that's the, potentially that's the final. That's the top eight right there. It's, it's a mammoth race. So it's huge. It, it might be wild me predicting two 52s. That, that might have, I might have got over it. <laughs> to me, it's not unrealistic to say four guys go under that nomination time. Uh, let's see. I will agree with you. I think Luke will go I think the nomination Luke, time. Luke goes under that as well. Yeah. yeah, and then Cam Brooker has looked good for me as well. Short course, yeah. Yeah. And then Johnny. So maybe five. Maybe, got, maybe five. <laughs> <laughs> maybe five. Maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves. This race is one of the highlights of the whole week for me. It's fi- Finally, it's, British backstroke is fast. It's yeah, really it is. Fast. I'd well, love to see two of you, two of the swimmers go sub 53. Um, I'm going to... Yeah, I definitely, I definitely think Ollie Morgan. I think Ollie Morgan will win this race with... He might just miss the British record, but you know he's going to be very, very close. I think, but the outside uh, medal, well, yeah, medals or the, the second, second slot, if you like, is um, well up for grabs. And you're going for Johnny Adam, are you? Or Jono Adam? Sorry, Jono. Um, yeah. I think he's actually going into this meet fairly quiet and under the radar, yeah, compared to the rest of them, yeah. Which might work in his favour. Maybe that will work. Yeah, exactly. So there's not as much pressure on him. There'll be a lot of pressure on Ollie Morgan. Because he's going in as triple crown British champion. Yeah, but so. I've, I've seen him race all year. Uh, Bucks, it just loves it. Like, yeah. thrives on it from what I've seen. Yeah, I think that's that's comes just from Gary. Racer. That comes from his coach, Gary. He loves swimming. He lo- he just loves it, doesn't he? Yeah. And Actually, it, co- the most it comes ex- through on Ollie as well. It wasn't even 100 back that I saw from Ollie. The most impressive thing I saw was skins up in Edinburgh. So it's 350 meter backstrokes where people get eliminated and you get three minutes in between each swim mm, yeah yeah he held split on the second and third 50 <laughs> yes impressive like whoa really impressive and i've heard some test sets that ollie and luke did out in thailand which mm. would blow people's mind i do think luke is better suited to 200 i think that's kind of oh obvious. yeah but um the, when we speak the about the 200 back show, level Oh, his aerobic base is just through the roof. I tell you what, if just you amazing. want to know that set, comment on the YouTube video and just say backstroke in Thailand and I will write the set that I heard from Ollie Morgan mm. and what they were holding because it is insane. Yeah, yeah. It bodes well. This is going to be an amazing race and I'd love to all of them to do the best that they can. That's, that's all you can ask. If they can all hit PBs, then you can't do, any, you can't do much more. Yeah, perfect. Men's mixed classification, 100 metres backstroke, and there's equally as an as impressive a backstroker as Ollie Morgan, if not more impressive a backstroker for me, actually, in this. Stephen Clegg, he is a class above like any mm. British backstroker in this. He's well underneath the nomination standard on personal best. Yep. And there is a chance that a world record could go if it, everything clicks for me. Well, I'm very much expecting a British record. I think that's kind of 
on the, very much on our cards, but if uh, world records on the cards as well, then we are in for something special. And this is what we all, we always talk about it when we talk about para swimmers. The para swimmers are more accomplished, let's say. They are stronger than our able body swimmers. Yeah. They've got more silverware. They've got more world records. And this is why I like the idea that para is being mixed in with able body swimming to get more eyes on these guys because these guys are fantastic. Stephen Clegg is, like you say, he he's is a, a world-class, yeah. world-class swimmer. And the fact that if he can hit a world record, or just a British record, the, that is outstanding. The time he's going to have to go is a 59.35. So it is a bit of a drop. Mm. But... You can never know of him. I, I, he's looked so good every time I've seen him race this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Very much hugely, looking forward to him. Hugely impressive. Elsewhere, though, there are other... Swimmers who are underneath their classification nomination times. Jordan Catchpole in the S14 is underneath. There are a fair few others in S14 who, mm. who could scrape beneath that time, um, but he is certainly the favorite in that classification. And again, we're going to mention him, Sam Downey. We've already talked about him yeah. once on this time. He is another favorite to go beneath his classification time in the S7. He needs to go sub 113.14. It does, yeah. And then the S14 swimmers, I think Lewis Lawler is probably a name that we should mention because he's a very strong backstroker. Yeah, they've William got to Allard. go a minute point seven, which yeah, is William fast. Yeah, William Mallard is racing, but he's got to find two seconds. That's a bit of a... He's a, he's a freestyle ladder. Bit of an ask, but yes. Oh, no, he absolutely is. But Louis Lawler, I think, is one to watch out for as well as, well as um, Jordan Catchpole as well. Okay, moving on to the women's 100 metres backstroke. Well, we just said the men's <laughs> one of the races. This is another one. This is... Um, it's a bit of strength and depth of British swimming right now because the nomination time of 59.89 looks well achievable for three. I, I, I agree. Yeah, I, I'm kind of expecting all three of them to hit the time, to be honest with you. Yeah, and how much of a credit is that to Kathleen Dawson's comeback? Like she has been through the mill with a very bad back injury. After I'd love to know. I'd Tokyo love to know the gold. extent of that injury because I don't know. I just know it's a really bad back injury, and it took her months to get back. And the fact years. that she's already, oh, yeah, yeah, years, true, yeah, years. years. And the fact that she's already going sixty point. Yep. After that layoff and you know the rehab that you've got to go through, and then has a very good chance of not only going sub minute, but then also get on the British team again three years later after all going through all of that. That really is inspiring. It is. Is that more impressive than her swims in Tokyo? For me, it could be. Ooh. Like If she opened up and told the story of that injury and how bad it was, that could be as impressive of when, as when she was swimming 58. She was, she was swimming very fast. Like, I she remember was. Europeans. She was just rapid, wasn't she? And I yeah. always remember that one race. I think it was Europeans. She had to do it twice. European fires, and they, they had to swim it twice. And the, the pressure must have been massive because she's just won gold, but then you've got to do it all over yeah. again. And she did. Um amazing that, that is is that i do love comebacks and effectively this is a comeback yeah, isn't it yeah 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 um so maybe it is more of a, an achievement i think it would be in her mind anyway especially let's talk about the other two swimmers then because lauren cox is a world medalist in the 50 and she is fast improving in the 100 to the point where she is fastest seed heading into this mm. um and then medi harris she like she's been quietly a extremely key cog in British female swimming for the past in general well yeah. like two years three years yeah, definitely yeah I agree uh, yeah. this is her favourite event oh uh, I, I think I think so yeah <laughs> why are you I've, questioning honestly, it honestly honestly I've got no idea Medi swims everything to be perfectly she honest does now she this does, is where she, she very found well. her name yes no I agree um, the three way head to head if you want to call it that is is going to be thrilling honestly I yeah. think all of them go sub minute which yep. is, you know, proven depth already. They've got to, what time they've got to hit? 59.89. They're all going to do that, I think. It, yeah. it, it, it comes down to the point of who's going to get their hand on the wall for the first and second places. Yep. So again, it's going to be almost a little bit of heartbreak, a little bit what we said with the women's 200 fly. It's really hard. I think and three I, of them are going to hit I the know, time. And I know what you're going to ask me, and I, I really hate doing it because, well, we know Lauren, we know Medi. <laughs> yeah. It's really tough to make a really informed decision about who's going to who's gonna be the one to miss out. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't... Uh, Again, it's just heartbreaking. It's, it's such a cutthroat. This is what sports is like, obviously. It's someone, yeah. someone has to miss out, unfortunately. Um, 
If I'm playing it safe down the middle, I say Medi gets selected elsewhere in other events, so can we take the other two in this? But that's that's not <laughs> how it works. That's not how it works, unfortunately. I like your thinking, though. I, like, <laughs> I do like your thinking. Um, yeah, very tough. I suppose going off entry times, Lauren and Medi are half a second ahead of Kathleen. So based on that, you kind of have to say yeah, that they're but... the top two going. And I suppose, are they the, the in-form swimmers? No, Kathleen well. beat Medi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's uh, so, Edinburgh. It's really interesting. It's in like season, I, though. I've got no idea who's going to win this race. I've got no idea who's going to hit the, the um, who's going to be the top two. No, I'm just I'm just very much looking forward to watching this unfold. I've got Can no idea. Can we skip? Can we skip? Like I'm yeah, we, st- really struggling to predict this. I've got no really. idea who's going to tune in. Who's do like, just watch this race. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and then we finish day two with the women's mixed classification 100 meters backstroke. This is an event where there are lots of swimmers under yep. the nomination standards, so it yeah. will be fast. I'm going to kick things off with Alice Tai. She's a superstar of para swimming. She's S8. She is well, well below the nomination standard of a 119.08. She has gone a 112. Mm-hmm. Um, if you follow her Instagram, I'd highly recommend it. She's one of these very open athletes that shares a lot about her life. And one of her amputations got quite badly infected while she was mm. racing, I think, before the World Para Series in Aberdeen. And I followed along her stories religiously over that weekend. Like, is she going to race? Is she going to race? Are we going to know yeah. what shape she's in? And she, I don't think she was able to race in the end. Um, but hopefully she's back to her best at this meet because she is a star in the swimming pool. Um, yeah. Beyond yeah. her, Lily Rice is in the same classification, close to this time as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Welsh swimmer. And this is where Poppy Maskell makes the team for me. Like we've spoken about her in the 200 meters freestyle. This is where she certainly can in the S14 classification. I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. I mean, going back to Alice Tai, she really is a superstar of swimming. Yeah. If you haven't already seen her amputation. Oh, yeah. Not even just para swimming, swimming. <laughs> yeah. No, just swimming in general. Yeah. I mean, she did a mass amazing documentary on the story of her amputation, the fact that she chose to do that because it was causing so much pain. So she really is an inspiration. That has um, won awards as well. And, oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. And then Poppy Masco, I think she is, she's definitely an up, up-and-coming para swimmer who I'm glad that she's getting the limelight on her and hopefully that she does get the limelight on her by going the nomination time because I think she's, she deserves it, to be fair. She's worked hard and I think this might just be the event that kickstarts her week as well. 